One of the diseases that we can see affecting our soybean crop is Phytophthora. And Phytophthora root and stem rot is a disease that we can see affecting the crop at the seedling stage as well as any stage of development. Uh, specifically, uh, when we're looking at this as far as where it occurs and what favors it, we'll often see it associated with compaction in a field, uh, turnaround points, traffic points. Many times we'll see it in low areas of the field uh, where we'll have uh, uh, maybe some flooding. It is favored by really wet conditions. So many times it'll show up right after a heavy rain event. Uh, it's, it's very common maybe a week after a heavy rain event is when we'll see it. So when we're looking at this at the field level and distribution, many times we'll see pockets or, or patterns associated with those traffic patterns uh, in the field. And if a field has a more uniform uh, lie to it, and we're looking at a field that has a lot of clay content and more fine textured soils, we may see it scattered across the field. Now, when we're looking at that individual area that's being affected, when we're, we're looking at the row area, we'll see some plants clustered, maybe a few dead plants together. Um, we'll see healthy plants mixed in there. So we won't see a, every plant in a zone affected. We'll see a, a, a variation in that row. Uh, which is typical with many of our, our soil associated fungal diseases. So in a, in a pocket or patch in the field, then we come into the row, we'll see a few plants scattered throughout. Now if we're looking at the actual individual plants that are dying, uh, specifically at the seedling stage, we're going to have that discoloration at the base of the plant working its way up. Now we want to see that dark discoloration up past that first those cotyledons where that purple line usually stops on those varieties. Now as we mature in the crop, as it continues to develop, we'll still see that exterior discoloration. And even in our mid reproductive stages, we can still see those brown stem bases. So when we're in our mid reproductive stages, some other common stem and root rot diseases that we will see would be sudden death syndrome, brown stem rot, uh, we'll see the phytophthora, and then we also see charcoal rot. So just a few that you really need to differentiate from to make sure that you're dealing with Phytophthora. Now when we're looking at those larger plants, we'll see that brown base working its way up into the canopy many times, you know, over a foot up into the canopy, we can even see that discoloration. If we would look at those plants and we'd split those stems, and that's one of the key things that many times we talk about with stem and root rots, uh, we'll see that inside, we typically won't see that brown discoloration in the center of the pith of that stem like we'll see with brown stem rot. Now you can have multiple pathogens involved, so it's not to say that, that you won't in some cases, but if it's mostly Phytophthora, you're not going to see that, you're not going to see that discoloration. The other thing we'll see when we pull those plants that are affected by Phytophthora is you're going to have a significant root rot. So the tap root, many of the roots are going to be uh, quite rotted away and those plants are going to pull very easily. So additional things to consider when you're scouting a field and looking for a Phytophthora, if you're a producer that has irrigated soybeans and you particularly have a pivot uh, or an area in the field where you have some drainage water collect, those are areas where many times we'll see those plants in those mid-reproductive stages being affected. And if you're seeing those plants scattered uh, throughout the field, the plants that are dying are being affected, but you're also having some root injury to other plants in the field. So you're going to want to keep a good record on that. Uh, make sure you know the fields that you have that have a history of Phytophthora so that you can take the appropriate management steps to keep this under control and maximize your soybean yields.